today I'm going to go through the fundamentals of approach lists. Pages to get your information in and atoms to start lifting those important details out of those pages. I'll then get you set up with a simple workflow so that you can capture and then use your atoms. And so to create those atoms in your workspace, all you need to do is highlight text and then use this capture atom button. And then this box will appear, which means that you've been successful in creating your atom and that that snippet of text that was highlighted has been lifted out of the page and saved as an atom in your workspace. But if we just close this box, you'll see that the text that I just captured as an atom is also highlighted in this page. So as I continue adding to this workspace, I'll show you how those atoms really come out of the page and can be used. But so that you know that this is actually happening, if you go to all pages, you will see that there's a list of all the pages in this workspace. And then on this side, we've got that atom that I captured. So any of the highlights that you're saving as atoms, you can actually see and browse through without needing to be inside that file because they'll all be listing here. We get asked a lot, what's the deal with them being called atoms? So in science, atoms are the building blocks of matter and you can take them from different places and assemble them together into new substances. And we felt that this was a really good analogy for knowledge because you collect little tidbits, facts, ideas, concepts from lots of different places and assemble them into your understanding, your opinions and your decisions. But when you're going about that process of collecting together those details, there's a few different words that you might use to describe them. Highlights, text snippets, golden nuggets, key ideas, the list goes on. And so we use atoms as a collective term for all of those and how you can assemble them together in a variety of different ways. So when you capture information as an atom, that lifts it out of your page so that you can access and use and assemble it together with other atoms across your workspace. And whenever you capture an atom, you automatically add what we call a source tag which is a link between that atom and the source that it came from in your workspace. So if I open this atom back up by clicking on it, you'll see that that source tag I just mentioned is in this bar above the atom. So if I click on that, it will take me back to the page where I captured that atom. So you can easily jump back to where you first captured that atom to gather further context. And now when I followed that link, it's opened up the page next to that all pages search that I was in. And we call this split screen, having the two pages side by side in the workspace. And I'll come back to split screen a bit later. But for now, let me just close this page here. So all you really need to know for atoms is highlighting text and hitting capture atom. So let's talk a bit more about getting information into your workspace. Now the sources of your information are likely to come in a variety of different file formats and types. But whatever those happen to be, if you're adding them into ProtoList, they are then known as a page in your workspace. And to add a new page into your workspace, you use this plus button at the top of what we call the sidebar down the left side of your screen. And when I click that, it will add a new page. It gives me several different options to set up the page and it also adds this page into the sidebar. And then to set up your page, you can choose from a few different types here, these four buttons. So you've got text editor for your own type notes. That first page that I captured the atom from is an example of a text editor page. We've also got table, which I will come back to shortly. And then we have file uploads, so you can add any of your files into ProtoList. And then there's also web page where you can paste a URL and it will import the content from a web page. So we've already got a type notes page. And by the end of the video, we'll have made use of all these types of pages, but I'm going to skip table for now, we're going to go ahead with uploading a file. So when I click this, I'll be prompted to choose a file from on my computer to upload. I've got one here about the forgetting curve. So this has been uploaded into the workspace. It's taken the title of the file as the title of the page, which is updated here and has also been added into the sidebar. So I could update that if I wanted. And then just like in the intro to ProtoList typed notes page, as you're working through and you come across an interesting piece of information, you highlight it and then click capture atom. And that has created an atom from that highlight, which will be added into the workspace. So let's grab a few more of those. So I've grabbed a few atoms from there. So let's add another page using the plus button. And this time I'm gonna choose web page. And then I'm gonna grab my URL and copy paste it in there. Hit import and it will extract the web content and give me all the text from the page here. And just like before, you can read through, highlight the sections of interest and then click capture atom. And that also will capture that text as an atom. 
So whatever the source is that you're uploading, as long as there's text, you'll be able to highlight and capture atoms. So we've added some pages into the workspace and all of those pages has been added into this sidebar. And we've also collected some atoms from those pages. So if we jump back into all pages, you can see how the workspace is growing. We've got more pages on this side and we're adding to our collection of atoms on this side. So this isn't really the most useful way for you to interact with the information in your workspace. So next I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can start to organize those pages that you've been adding, because if you continue to add them into the sidebar, it would quickly get very full. I'm going to suggest that we use a table. And the main reason that I think you should organize using tables is because they have an atoms property. So you'll be able to see the atoms that you have collected in the table view. So when you add a table into Protolist, it automatically has three properties. There's name, subpages, and atoms. And at this point, we're actually gonna ignore subpages, so let me just delete that one. So I'm also gonna update the title of this, and then what I'm gonna do is drag and drop all of the pages that we just added from their current location sitting in the sidebar onto the sources table that we've just created. And as I'm doing that, you can see that they are moving into the table as rows of that table, and the atoms property is displaying those atoms that we captured from those pages. And this is useful because all of that important information that you've identified inside a source has been brought to the surface. So you can see all of that most important information from your collection of sources without having to jump back into each one of them and scroll through until you refine that piece of information again. And you can add new pages straight into your table as a row by using this new button at the top of your table. So you can type in a title here and then you can use this open button to open that page up where it gives you an interface that looks very, very similar to using the plus button at the top of the sidebar. But you can choose the type of page and add your information in. And when you're done working in a page that sits within a table, you can get back to that table by clicking on the title of the table in the sidebar or by using the breadcrumb links at the top here. So if I jump back to the sources table, I didn't set that up as a page or capture any atoms, so nothing is displaying in the atoms column there. Table tip one, you can add a particular type of page by using this drop down menu next to the new, so you could quickly navigate straight into a text page to start typing your notes without needing to press those buttons to select the page type on setup and jump back into the sources page. And then table tip number two is that if you've got a load of files that you want to get into Protolist, drag and drop the selection onto this table and it will upload them all at once. So ignoring some of the rows that I added that don't have any atoms, we've now got a collection of atoms from a few different sources that we can view in this table. So the last thing I'm gonna go through is how you can actually use those atoms and start assembling them together to create. So using the information that's in this workspace, I'm going to write some kind of summary. So I'm gonna add a new page, set it up as a text editor because I'm gonna to want to type in it. And I'm gonna give it the imaginative title summary. And to refer to those atoms that I've collected from several sources, I'm gonna open up that table alongside this page so that I can see both at once. And so the shortcut to open two pages side by side in split screen is to control click on the second page that you want to open next to your current page. You can also get to split screen by hovering over this page, clicking this three dot button, which is the page options, and then choosing open in split screen. And so now we've got the summary page open next to the sources and all of the atoms that we've collected. And so to start to pull all those ideas together, I'm gonna to prep the page by adding those ideas into it. And to do that, I can just drag and drop the atoms straight into this page. And when I do that, it adds the text of the atom into the page, along with an in-text citation and a references section. So let me add in a few other atoms from some of those other pages. And once these atoms are in the page, I can edit and tweak them and bring them all together into a cohesive piece of writing. And if I'm working on this over a few days or I want to just double check that I've actually interpreted that information correctly, I can click on that citation and it will jump me right back to exactly where that piece of information or atom that I captured came from within the source. And then I can jump back to that overview of all the atoms from my sources by clicking the sources link in the breadcrumbs up here and then continue writing. And then once you're done, you can download this in the page options in the top right of your page, click that three dot button, and then you can choose to download as a PDF or document and you can get that information out complete with a references section. So that's an overview of the fundamentals. We've gone through adding pages to get your sources of information into Protolist, how you can then go through and highlight the interesting bits of text inside those sources and save them as atoms to lift them out of the page. And then we've gone through organizing your collection of sources into a table so that you can make use of that atoms property, which means that you can see all of those atoms from inside your pages without needing to open them up and browse through them. And finally, how you can then start using drag and drop to add those atoms into a page and start assembling them together. So this is a bit of a crash course to get you set up and used to how your information and knowledge moves around in Protolist. So as you get more familiar with Protolist, you can take a look at some of our other workflows for ideas and inspiration as to how you can take advantages of connections and tags to further organize the information and atoms in your workspace.